Hello everyone. Today we are going to look at the first portrait of a free slave in the history of art. A portrait of Ayuba Suleiman Diallo from British painter William Orr. A man whose eyes tell us that he has a story to tell, a story about dignity and equality of human beings. This extraordinary painting tells a touching story of a 29-year-old man, Diallo, who has been born and raised in Senegal in the early 18th century to a prominent Muslim family, a place that has become a vulnerable victim of a slave trade. Since early age, he was known for his great intelligence and memory. By the time he was 15, he had already memorized the entire Quran. Unfortunately, in 1731, when Diallo was on his way to settle some deals on behalf of his father, he was captured and taken into slavery, shipped with hundreds of other Africans to the British colonies in the today's United States, where he was forced to work on a tobacco plantation. Despite the cruelty and abuse he faced in the American colony, he remained devoted to his Islamic rituals, going into nearby woods to pray five times a day. Once, during a prayer, after two years on the plantation, a child came to him and in a humiliating sense threw dirt in his face. Right after this experience, exhausted Diallo tried to escape the plantation just to be caught again and thrown into prison. However, Diallo's life dramatically changes. In the prison, where he met English lawyer Thomas Bluet, who was taken by Diallo's story, his literacy, piety, and devoteness despite the hardships, and also Diallo fluently speaking and writing in Arabic as it was his native tongue, he already was able to speak in English after being two years on the plantation. God was so impressed that he befriended him and managed that Diallo was brought to England. In England, he was treated as a free man, he was introduced to a prominent gentleman society in Spalding, which was sort of an intellectual club, and also introduced to the king and queen. In the time of great racial segregation, people were impressed by his intelligence and devotedness to his monotheistic belief, as they saw it as something familiar to their own faith. Surrounded by elite circles of British society, often debating with Christian priests and bishops, he then became engraved in the British society, but mostly because of his memoirs which were published in 1733 by Thomas Bluet. These memoirs became the first voice in a long tradition of slave narrative. Also, was the memory of Diallo, his sensitiveness, his education, his literacy and piety that urged abolitionists towards the end of the 18th century to argue that the black man had a moral character and every right to be treated equally. Now, let's return to the description of the painting. The first portrait to depict a man of African descent and a Muslim in a positive and noble way. It does so by authors using the conventions of the British portraiture at that time, yet still wearing his own country dress and a red hanging Koran on his chest one of the three Korans that Diallo has written purely out of his memory during his captivity. In the 18th century, people of African descent used to be portrayed in a meaningful way, usually with facial features exaggerated unnaturally, and they were never the subject of a painting. Yet, Diallo has become the personification of the anti-slavery movement. Slavery it does more than anything else that it crushes individuality, it 
crushes personal freedom. On the other hand, what portraiture is all about is about individuality. And this painting is about individuality. At the time of great racial segregation, this work of art strikes the society. It almost captures something transcendental in the way how Diallo looks to the viewer. His eyes convince us that he has every right to be treated equally. The way he looks destroys the whole concept of slavery. And that is created by the work of art by William Hall. This portrait sums up his incredible story as a religious West African man, enslaved and abused, who won respect and freedom from society that believed he was inferior, and who, throughout his years in slavery, never lost his identity.